Special thanks to our sponsors for sending us to Computex 2019. What is going on, everyone? We are here in Taipei for Computex 2019. This is probably the first video you're going to see from us regarding Computex coverage, and we're going to kick things off with, obviously, AMD stuff because... Wow, you guys are all over this, and I don't really blame you. So I have a lot of stuff pulled up on my phone here. I'm going to be occasionally looking and referencing it because there's a lot of stuff to go through. Uh, but I want to start, start first with the CPUs themselves, just so we get a baseline what we're going to be working with uh, and talk about what we expect to come out very soon, uh, especially like the 16-core Ryzen 9 CPUs we're expecting here. Uh, so starting first with Ryzen 5, we have the 3600, the 6 cores, 12 threads, uh, boost frequency of 4.2 gigahertz, 3 megs of L2 cache, 32 megabytes of L3 cache. And then we have the Ryzen 5 3600X, just a higher boost frequency, essentially, uh, and that's a 95-watt chip. Ryzen 7 goes up to the 3700X. That's 8 cores, 16 threads, 4.4 gigahertz boost frequency. This is definitely higher than what we're familiar with uh, regarding Zen and Zen Plus. Ryzen 7 3800X, 8 cores, 16 threads, 4.5 gigahertz boost frequency. Of, uh, that jumps up to 105 watts, so uh, that's a bit higher. And then Ryzen 9 3900X, 12 cores, 24 threads, a 4.6 gigahertz boost frequency. Remember, this isn't talking about all cores, so you won't have an all core 4.6 gigahertz uh, boost frequency, uh, but you could certainly manually overclock if you wanted. We're not sure how good of overclockers these chips are going to be, uh, but 4.6 on any core for anything named Ryzen is a big step in the right direction because we've been limited to pretty much around 4, 4.1, maybe 4.2 gigahertz for at least one or two cores uh, with Zen Plus, and then Zen, the original Zen, Ryzen 1000 was if you were lucky, 4 gigahertz. Now, regarding the price, I don't think the price is too bad. I haven't seen many people talk about the price. I, for the most part, they've been fairly positive about the 499 price tag. Uh, and I think you just have to look at this in a macro sense, right? 12 cores in a mainstream, consumer-grade CPU is unheard of. Now, I'm going to throw up this graphic here. And this one's very interesting to me. Again, you got to take these things with pretty large handful of salt. When we're talking about, you know, industry tests, uh, <laughs> This is probably something that AMD is trying to make look better for themselves. I would say this about Intel. I would say this about NVIDIA. It doesn't matter what company it is. Uh, I would wait for third-party reviews before you start, you know, spewing this as gospel. Uh, but when you talk about IPC, which is something that Intel has dominated for a long time, we've got a graphic here showing that the 3700X is pretty much neck and neck with the 9700K's IPC, 9900K, and this is going to be a better bench chip overall. That's why it's slightly higher IPC than that. Uh, plus 2%, and then 3% for the 3800X. Again, we don't know for sure. We're going to be running many tests at the exact same frequencies in the future to show you guys what you're getting uh, per clock. Uh, but this is this is really good news. If it comes this close, maybe within 2 or 3% of Intel, I will be just as happy, and I would gladly pay, pay 500 bucks for a 12-core, 24-thread chip like that, especially on a consumer-grade platform. Uh, now, you're going to need a very beefy chipset to handle all the new features, including PCIe 4, including power delivery, and uh, the X570 chipset is what I want to talk about next. We're in the Gigabyte suite, in case you're wondering, and there are plenty of boards in that direction, and they are all being occupied by uh, other media. So we'll try to find our way in there at some point, uh, but you'll see some shots here in a second. And uh, yeah, these boards are looking really good from Gigabyte. We're gonna talk about some of X570's features next. Now what you're looking at here is the X570 Aorus Extreme, one of the best uh, 570 boards that Gigabyte has to offer. And this is a direct 16 phase motherboard here. So the power delivery up top, no doubling. It is purely 16 individual phases feeding that CPU. And uh, that's pretty incredible. That also tells us a lot about power draw for Ryzen 2 or, or Zen 2, however you want to call it, Ryzen 3000. You can see we have two uh, dedicated 8-pin EPS ports up top. Whenever you see something like this, we saw this with X299, that means that when you manually overclock these CPUs, they are going to pull some power, so don't be surprised. Also, you'll notice that most X570 chipsets have dedicated fans. They're usually pretty small, uh, but this one doesn't have uh, that fan because the entire... Uh, this entire plate here is made out of metal, so that conducts a lot of the heat and passively radiates it to the atmosphere. Also, a heat pipe extends up, connects that to the, uh, to the north uh, VRM uh, fin stack, and uh, I like seeing individual fins here. This is something Gigabyte did a while back with, I believe, the original X370 boards that they had. And now we're seeing the fin stacks again uh, with the uh, VRM cooling here on the X570. So good to see that it's stuck around. And uh, that will definitely come in handy, especially when manually overclocking. And I'm sure you've heard it a lot, PCIe Gen 4 doubling the bandwidth of PCIe Gen 3. So this is a 2 terabyte drive here you're looking at from Gigabyte. Uh, and uh, this course using the NVMe interface. You could RAID these, and that would 
almost double your performance. Um, I'm, I'm actually running a RAID 0 config uh, in, in my personal rig right now, and it's been pretty stable. And then check this out. This right here has four of those uh, NVMe drives packed into that. You can see using the PCI slot, and uh, this is a full 16 lane card. Like this will, this will saturate a full 16 lanes. And uh, because they have four of these cards in here in RAID, you can see theoretical reads and writes up to 15,000 megabytes per second. So uh, not sure if you guys really care at all about transfer speeds, but if you want some of the best out there, at least on consumer grade hardware, then uh, this would definitely be it. It is very heavy, very sleek looking, looks very good, requires active cooling, and I'm sure it's going to cost an arm and a leg. And if you're looking for something nice and compact, here we have an X570i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi. You guys love ITX builds, this is for you. They told me that this is going to be uh, very overclockable, so you should expect similar overclocking performance with this as you would in some of their beefier boards, thanks to eight uh, discrete phases. Uh, and then you have an eight layer thick PCB. I know it's kind of hard for you guys to see, but this is an ultra thick PCB here, so uh, you can do a lot more with the board when you have eight different layers to run uh, those copper traces, and uh, that's pretty impressive. Again, active cooling here pretty much every board except for the one we showed you earlier that extreme board so active cooling over the chipset underneath that uh, and then we have a very beautiful if you check out the backside here built-in io shield so at this point it's pretty easy to speculate and assume that amd is just going to take everything over and force intel to walk with its tail between its legs for a good two or so years, at least until whatever they're working on regarding 10 nanometers actually comes to fruition because that's been delayed many times and uh, we still have an Intel shortage of current 14 nanometer stuff thanks to the fact that they're manufacturing chipsets and CPUs on the same fab. So um, it's not looking great for Intel at this point and I'm sure any somewhat cognizant tech tuber will tell you that. But here's where I get just a little apprehensive. And I want to bring this up because it's a trend that I've noticed lately. And I've talked with some industry reps and, and I'm not really sure what to take away from it all because AMD for the past three or four years has been pushing higher core count chips. That is, they're trying to make high core count chips as mainstream as possible. And that's perhaps one of the reasons why Zen and Zen Plus weren't great overclockers, relatively speaking. I mean, if you could hit 4 or 4.2 gigahertz, it's great, but Intel's hitting 5, right? And that's one of the reasons why they perform so much better in games, because games are still largely quad, maybe hexacore dependent. Uh, so, you know, the difference between a 1600 and a 1700 Ryzen CPU uh, isn't much when it comes to frame rates, and that's because games, for the most part, don't effectively utilize eight threads uh and well i said eight threads what i mean is eight cores 16 threads in the case of smt so my my question and what i'm looking forward to in 2019 2020 uh is how many developers in both the the creative side as well as the gaming side are really going to take advantage of 12 cores or 16 cores for that matter. Let's assume we're talking about 16 cores already. We know what's coming, right? That second chiplet, there was a blank space there and we know that that's what this is basically resulting in is a, a 12 core and now a 16 core CPU, 32 threads in a consumer grade chip, incredible. But is it really going to be worth it for gamers? Are the programs and the games you're going to be using on your system really going to be able to utilize 16 cores? I mean, let alone 16 threads. But you have 32 threads there in that case, 24 threads in the case of the 3900X. That's just, that's mind boggling to me. And what I'm curious to know and, and find out in the next year or two is whether or not AMD's expectations regarding higher core count dependencies actually do end up playing out uh, in the real world. So I want to know what you guys think about 12 core CPUs, 16 core CPUs, mainstream, consumer grade. Is it something you would consider? And if so, why? I want you to justify it. That's really the key here. It's easy to say, oh yeah, I've got a really nice 12 core CPU, but I really only utilize six cores, you know, and 12 threads. But, but I have 12 cores if I need them. Is it something you're really going to be able to use? Can you justify it? Try to do so in the comment section below. If you, if you stream, if you do whatever, and you think you're going to be able to utilize that much, then sure. But uh, this is something that I'm curious about. And uh, for my own uses, I mean, it's, it's tough to find, especially with AMD nowadays, programs that will saturate the full core, up, the core lineup. Uh, so, yeah, we'll only, <laughs> we'll have to wait 
and find out. Uh, this is kind of a weird spot to film, but I wanted to end this video outside because it was very loud indoors. You guys have been awesome, and uh, yeah, this is hopefully going to be our first video. I'll upload this today, and then uh, we have plenty of stuff to show you guys from the Nangang Exhibition Hall and then the Grand Hyatt Hotel. Plenty of suites with some sweet offerings. Stay tuned for that stuff. You guys have been awesome. Thanks for watching. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.